Jill had got the the finishing yes. end of that. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure how Oli Ashall got, got through like he did when he when he took that kick, partly because some people were coming up the stairs just in front of me just as he made the break. Yeah. And then once they'd gone past me, he was through and, and throwing the pass. I was like, how, how did he get through there? There was four of them. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> little men sometimes slip through. Uh, but, you know, and it was great effort from Price to make it to the line as well, running, running yeah. full tilt. No, it, yeah, he did well. Um, by this point, David had joined us for this match, and him and Joshua um, were the self-appointed Josh Jones booers. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, the other thing I've got in my notes to cover on this one, I don't know how much you guys knew about this at your end, but we were on about the 20 metre line towards the Gallagate end, whereas you were in the Lees' end, weren't you, at the, the top yeah. of the hill? So when Tom Johnson scored his try, he actually snapped the corner post. Oh, really? No, I had no idea. Yeah, so do, do, do you remember there was like a bit of a stoppage after that try? And yeah. everyone was kind of figuring out what was going on. And we were sat there saying, they must have a spare. They can't have come to Magic Weekend with just four corner posts and have <laughs> no spares. And... I guess they didn't have a spare. So what had happened is it, it had snapped when it, they'd gone over it rather than just spring out like they normally do. The, yeah. the last, I don't know, four inches or so had actually snapped off. Oh. Um, so the guy in the corner trying to sort it all out, he had to like go into the hole and, and pull it out. You actually saw the broken bit come out. It was pretty sharp. Um, yeah. But obviously they didn't have a spare. So another bloke came round to see what was going on. And then a third bloke came and the third bloke basically just pulled the rod out down low enough and hoped that the top bit wouldn't be too floppy and it, it wasn't it stayed there for the rest of the weekend we were sort of thinking what if someone else goes over it and it comes out yeah. and it's got that fucking spike on the end of it yeah no, no no scoring in the corner thank you very much yeah well luckily the next game didn't really have much scoring to worry about at no, all no, and the other and the, the game after that it was just a procession down the center um so but yeah that was a, a little bit of a side show that we um, that we enjoyed in our corner, but it just shows not having a spare. That's just mm. lame. You'd think, yeah, you just have a bag with, you know, spare bits of everything, really. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Um, you said about booing Josh Jones. When he scored on 74 minutes, I did wonder if there was a Catalan-style comeback on, but... Um, Chris Green scored a pretty easy try when yeah. Wakefield just marched straight up the other end dead easily and um, uh, with Lino and Miller run, pulling the strings like uh, like who said, someone said, your dad said your dad said yeah, yeah. I do like Miss and Lino um, I, I think that he's got something about him and playing at the moment in a Wakefield side where the pack is playing the weight yeah it, it, it means he looks like he's got the time that I think sometimes he needs. But yeah, you're right. There's something about him. Yeah. Highlight of this game, though, was the halftime performance by Mark, wasn't it, on the Mastermind quiz? 10 out of 10. Yeah. Absolutely nailed it. Oh. Anything else from you on Huddersfield, Wakefield? No, I don't think so. Nope, me neither. Like Let's move on to Wigan versus Warrington then. Um it was Wigan 6, Warrington 10, which was also the half-time score. James Child was the referee. In terms of the stats, um, this game had the most metres for any game that we have full stats on this year. But actually, looking at the games that we don't have full stats on, I don't think any of them would have got to that. Your game would have got close, but no other game would have, would have overtaken this game, I don't think. Um, both sides had more than 1,650 metres. So that just says... That you know, partly because there was no try scored, so there wasn't any conversions being waited around for. But the ball was in play a lot in this game. Um, Warrington made more of the meters though, and had a 1.2 meters per carry better average gain as well. Although Wigan had two breaks to one by wire and fewer errors made as well, but more penalties conceded in what was a fairly even game on the stats. Uh, individually, Josh Charnley 182 meters. Um, when when the, it was after the Williams try it must have been but for some reason the fans wanted to sing the Josh Charnley song rather than another song in the corner and uh, he'd gone back into his position for the kickoff and he was like nodding along to his own and like 
to his own song. He was loving it. Mike Cooper, five tackle bus, 179 metres. He was exceptional. Chris Hill, 143 metres. Very good as well. Ben Curry, 43 tackles and 101 metres went both ways. For Wigan, Zach Hardacre, one of many Wigan players who need their own ball. Seven tackle bus and 227 metres for him. He did well when he got his ball. Uh, Liam Farrell, five tackle bus and 180 metres. Jackson Hastings, he needs a ball of his own as well. 180 metres for him. He did well when he had his own ball. And Kai Pierce paul 47 tackles from the London man. Um, fan view, Sarah. Yes, so Pop the Viking said, a good game to watch from the neutral. Warrington just edging the win, but a big improvement from Wigan. Defence on top from both teams. EFC 78J, you said, is now a bad time to say we beat you three times? That's a fact. Um, what uh, show why are sealing our top four spots today with a win with two tries on the board from Thewlis in the first minute and George Williams against his former club but unfortunately Wigan got one through Havard right before half time who a second half barely nothing happened other than defence on our own line unlucky Mark and Wigan Warriors Matt Speakman said that's a group of players desperate for the season to end great effort and solid defence but just stalled every single time we got the ball Nice to see a flowing game. The refs all weekend seem to let a lot go for both sides, which led to a better product. I've noticed that Warrington have been stepping off the mark after playing the ball for a while now, and it gives an unfair advantage, ruins the markers. It was ridiculous in this game. It was... I'm not exaggerating. It was four out of the five tackles every set. It it was pathetic, but yeah, um, it wasn't why we lost. (laughs) Um... Joshua's granddad said, the battle of fat boys with the drums. Wire looked comfortable for most of the first half with George asking the pies for clarification of their chance. The only question being when the when will the floodgates open? But surprisingly, Wigan slipped over for a try on the stroke. From then on, both teams looked remarkably short of quality. And Neil Ormston said, well, that was another intense in quotation marks game. Yeah, there's a story behind that. Um, Neil was the only person who didn't enjoy the Saints-Warrington game last week from the, from the fan right, reviews. Yes. And he sent in an email sort of explaining where he was coming from and what he's okay. gone back and looked into it. But it was it was quite lengthy, and I thought, that's a conversation for a week that isn't the Magic Weekend conversation week. But, um, yeah, we will get to that, Neil, that's for sure. And it is a good one. It is a good one. Hill and Cooper were immense, and Mulhern carried strongly off the bench. Widdup, Williams and Ratchford all looked dangerous, but credit to Wigan's defence. Again, their lack of bite and attack was their undoing. But I wouldn't bet on seeing against seeing these two back at Old Trafford for Act 4 and, of course, a different outcome this time. Oh, Wigan are going to win by a wide margin rather than a close margin. Interesting prediction, Neil. Um, at Mike Dodd 22 said, Gripping battle... Oh, he means a different outcome of this season because, of course, we've lost three games. EFC said that. So the fourth game will be the one where oh, we win. With it. Now I'm with it. Yeah. It could be both. It could be both, couldn't it? Because we're three grand finals too. It, it, anyway, whatever. Uh, at Mac.22 said, gripping battle between the two sides. Cooper and Hill, very good again. Cracking atmosphere in the wire corner. Yeah, they were noisy. Uh, very glad the last play didn't ruin a great day out. Oh, Mike. <laughs> the last play was the only real excitement in this game, weren't it, though? The first set and the last set. And it was all about which way the ball's going to bounce. Yeah. Yeah, I was quite pleased it bounced the right way at the end there. <laughs> As I was going to the bloke in front. Um, he wanted Wigan to win because he said he'd lived in Warrington for 10 years and hated it. Um, but I said, I was on the pod with you today. This is how the conversation came about. Um, and um, I didn't fancy being the only loser on the show. <laughs> We've had plenty of shows where we've been both both uh, licking our wounds, I think, Sarah, though, haven't we? <laughs> I think we have recently, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think one thing that's notable is Warrington's forwards, their props were really good. That you know they made a lot of ground. Um, Wigan did well to contain their attacking plays off the back of that, given how, you know good on the front foot the props were why have barely ever looked threatening throughout the game there was only the um, wid up break and quick play of the ball for the Williams try where they actually really did out uh, it felt like then you know the flip side is Wigan didn't look any any better in attack either I think there's only 
maybe one or two plays outside of the try play where a Wigan attacker with the ball in hand had two live options to pass the ball to. And on that play, he had Havard on the front line, Smith pulling out the back um, of what would normally be the play that Wigan would put on and then get caught. And so, but, but because he had the second option, he actually had to, you know, the, the defence had questions to answer and yeah. and Wigan scored a try. And it's remarkable what happens when you have two options for, for, for a passer to give the ball to, you actually score tries. Um, so I, I think that was... That that was the story of it. You could you could say as well both defenses were really good though. Of course they were, and the Hardacre and Farrell stop on Hughes on the on the goal line that was really special defense. I mean he got the ball down just before the goal line, and they got him up yeah. just on the goal line. It was so like close. Um, great great defense. Yeah, no, it was. Um... I like the look of Thewlis. I don't feel like I've really seen much of him, but I thought he played really well um, on Sunday. Yeah, the two, the, the two young wingers opposite each other, weren't they? And, and Thewlis, you know, came out with the try, so in, in lots of ways would, would come out and top in that, in that battle. Um, I think he was... He's a full-back, isn't he, is what he, where he wants to play, but I, I like it when young players still show up in other positions yeah. when they when they come into the team, you know, rather like than sulking or moaning. Show, we weren't sure what Jake Connor was response would be to being moved to half back. But thankfully, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. There's, so, you know yeah, I think all players, regardless of their age, have got um you know, I owe it to the team to do put in the, the, the work, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think I, uh, I think one, th- you know, talking of a young player who put in a lot of work and then seemed to have cramp for the entire second half, Danny Walker, who eventually was undone and then came back on at the end, sort of after the final whistle, wearing a, a boot. So I don't know if it was more than just cramp in the end that, that took him off, but he was cramping up through most of the second half. But he was stepping in for Daryl Clark, who's been poorly. I think if Clark had have played, maybe they would have taken a bit more advantage off those uh forward performances because Walker's good on his own but he doesn't quite create off the back of his own stuff you know it, Powell uh, Pat, not Powell um, Clark will make the break but then will also have a have a flick pass or an offload or something as well up his sleeve that would take advantage of he thinks that he's not going to be able to to get there himself um, I think you know he's obviously a more, more experienced player and is a top top class player so Clark was missing for Warrington I think that did hamper their attack to some extent um, but yeah I, I think the main difference maker and we could have been talking about a different outcome was the bounce of the ball I mean if if um, if Gareth Widdop would have hit that ball cleanly rather than off the, the inside of his boot and if the ball had have bounced how you normally think it would have bounced rather than sort of inside as far as it did then that opening try wouldn't have been scored. And then if on the flip side of the last play of the game, when Powell kicked cross field, if that had bounced out rather than up, um, Wigan had two or three players out there. And even if actually, if Zach Hardacre would have looked around for a pass rather than putting in a pathetic little pokey kick, um, yeah. which was a sad end to a game where he was, he individually was strong. Um, yeah. but this is the problem with Wigan in defence have been unified they look like a team Wigan in attack it's all individuals and it's yeah. it's it's frustrating yes I, I don't think this game was as intense by the way as the Saints game last week I think this game was in patches quite good and intense but I don't think it was quite as quick as the Saints wire game and I don't think that there was as much threat from either side, regardless of like def- um, whether they scored or not, I think the threats were more there last week, and you see we saw more desperation efforts than you saw in this game. I felt, uh, which to me scales up the intensity a bit with the speed and the desperation. But um, it, I, I, I'm imagining for the neutral, it wasn't an unenjoyable game. Yeah, I'd say it wasn't um, unenjoyable. It just, yeah. 
I think possibly um, there was maybe too much made of, you know, the fact that this was going to be a great game and um, the 